Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about container in container or Docker in Docker. Before understanding about this, let us try to understand why we need this. For example, if you are running some process inside a Docker container, within the process, if it needs to run Docker commands, then those Docker commands will create other containers. Let us take an example with Jenkins. If Jenkins master or Jenkins agent is running within a container and if you need to perform Docker builds as part of our Jenkins jobs, then those Docker builds will be executed within the container. So these builds will create some other containers. So that means we need to configure Jenkins in such a way that we need to allow the containers to run inside another container. Same is the case with other CI tools which can run inside Docker containers. So this container in container or Docker in Docker can be configured using different methods. Here in the diagram, this is the first method and this is the second method. In the first method, we have concept of sibling containers. That means this is the host where we have Docker engine installed and we start the container within this host, for example, Jenkins master. And within this container, if we need to perform some other Docker builds, those builds will create containers. So these containers can be created within this container or outside the container as sibling to this container. So in the first method, these containers will be created as siblings to the main container within the same host. And in the second method, we have the main container and the Docker builds within this container will create other containers within the same container. That means these containers are nested inside the main container. So in this video, we are going to see the method one for creating the sibling containers. So this is our approach. So we have this host machine. And for example, assume we don't have any containers in this host machine. So we have installed the Docker engine. So the Docker engine is up and running. So this Docker engine will listen on a Docker socket. So this is basically a Unix socket. So the Docker daemon listens on this Unix socket. So whatever processes within the host wants to communicate with this Docker engine, they will communicate via this Docker socket. For example, if we execute Docker commands within the host machine, so these commands will communicate with this Docker engine via this Docker socket file. So to create container C1 here, so we will execute corresponding docker run command that will communicate with this engine via this socket. Then it will create a container C1. So now we have container C1. So we want to execute docker commands within the container C1. Now if we share this docker socket from the host machine to the container C1, the docker commands which will be executed within the container, those can reach this docker engine via this socket file. So that means whatever commands we execute within the container C1 will be executed in the same way as the docker commands which are executed within the host. So that means these docker commands will create containers within the host machine like C2, C3 and so on. So this C2 and C3 are siblings to container C1 here. Here we are creating the sibling containers within the host machine using this docker socket file which is shared from the host machine to the main container C1. So let us see this approach in the demo. This is the Linux host with Ubuntu operating system. Here I have already installed Docker. We can verify the status of the Docker. So the Docker daemon is up and running. Here we can see that this is listening on the Docker socket. So let us verify this socket file. So we can also see this socket file under slash where directory. Actually, this run directory under slash where mount point is a soft link to this run directory. We can verify that. Here we can see that the run directory under slash where is a soft link to slash run. So that means this file and this file are same. So now let us try to create a new container C1 by sharing this socket file with the container using Docker volumes. Let me log in with Docker user which I have created for running Docker commands. So this user is part of docker group. That means this user can execute docker commands. Here we don't have any images. So let us try to create a new container now. So I am creating a new container using docker run command. I will give the name as c1. So now we need to mount the docker socket file from the host machine to the container. So for that we are using docker bind mounts. And we are mounting in the same directory 
in the container as well. So for this demo, I am using Ubuntu image and we will get the interactive terminal. Let us execute this. Now it will download the Ubuntu image to this machine and it will create a container C1. So now we are within the container C1. So here to execute docker commands within this container, we need to install docker client. So let us install docker client within this container. So let us execute these three commands for installing docker within the Ubuntu container. This command will install curl command. So let us install docker using this command. So here docker is installed, we can verify that. Now let us verify the docker socket file which is shared with this container. So this is the socket file which is shared with this container. So now let us try to execute some docker commands within this container. So when we execute docker commands, they will use this socket file to contact the docker daemon within the host machine, not in this container. So for this example, let me create two containers, C2 and C3 using nginx image. So for that I am using docker run command again. I am giving the name as C2, we will run it in the background using nginx image. So it is downloading the nginx image. So this download is happened within the host machine. Similarly, we can create another container C3. So now we have created two containers. Let us verify with docker ps command. So now we can see here there are three containers C1, C2, C3. So these containers exist in the host machine. So even though we created the container C2, C3 in this container, but these containers are created within the host machine. So that we can verify. So this is the host machine. Let us verify the containers using docker ps. Similarly, here we can verify the images. The nginx image will be created in this host instead of the container c1. Here we can see that the nginx image is downloaded within the host machine. So this way, by sharing the docker socket from the host machine to the main container, we can execute docker commands within the container. Even the corresponding docker operations will be done in the host machine instead of the main container. So in this video, we have seen how to execute docker commands within another docker container by sharing the docker socket file from the host machine with the container. This method is simple, but the only problem is sharing the docker socket file from the host to the container, which is a security concern because the container will have access to all the docker operations within the host machine. I hope this video helps. Thanks a lot for watching.